So over the past couple of years, there's been a lot of football myths going around the internet. From the helium football to valve shots, there's a lot of football conspiracies out there. So today I tried out some of the biggest football myths for myself. So first up today we have the Cristiano Ronaldo penalty technique. So in a game against PSG, Ronaldo took a penalty where he actually lifted the ball off the grass by forcing the ground upwards with his standing foot. Alright, so we're going to be taking 10 Ronaldo penalties to start off today. Also, I'm not sure how well we're going to be able to do this on a pitch this dusty, but we're going to give it a go. Alright, this is penalty number one. So after testing out the Ronaldo penalty for myself, we didn't actually see much uplift on the ball. So while this myth isn't completely false, it definitely takes the right circumstances to do it right. So next up today we have the Kevin De Bruyne topspin free kick. So unlike taking a normal free kick with the laces on your boots, Kevin De Bruyne actually uses the instep of his foot to get as much topspin on the ball as he can. Alright, next up we have the De Bruyne knuckleball technique and if we do this correctly we should be seeing a lot more topspin on our shots. So after taking a couple free kicks with the De Bruyne technique, I could definitely see a lot more topspin on our shots when we got the technique right. So overall, the Kevin De Bruyne free kick technique worked pretty well for us, so this myth is pretty successful. So the next myth we're going to be taking a look at is hitting the valve. So hitting the valve has always been speculated to generate more power on your shots due to a harder spot on the ball around the valve. Alright, so first up today we're going to be taking 10 normal penalties just to get an average speed of what our shots should look like. 79 kilometers per hour 81 96 92 99 89 89 94 83 88 All right, and now it's time for the valve shot 87 88 104 kilometers per hour 90 kilometers per hour 84 94 95 86 91 kilometers per hour 82 So at the end of our experiment the average speed of our shots was very close together so overall valve shots are gonna remain a myth for me Next up today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most simple hacks and it's whether more aggressive sole plates make you run faster. Taking a look at one of the biggest football conspiracies on the internet now, we're going to be taking some helium free kicks and seeing whether helium actually makes your shots knuckle more. Alright, so we're going to be filling up this football with helium to see if it does anything, so let's get into it. So I'm also going to be weighing the football before I put any helium into it, just to see if the football gets any lighter. Alright, so the normal football with no helium in it is weighing in at 430 grams. Now we're going to weigh the football with helium in it, so it's going to come in at 426 grams. So it is actually 4 grams lighter. So anyway, let's get to the pitch now and test this thing out. Alright, so we're down at the pitch now. We're going to be taking a couple free kicks with the helium ball and seeing if there's any difference between the flight of this one and a normal football.
So after taking a couple shots with the helium football, I can easily say that there was no difference between it and a normal football. Even though the helium ball might have been slightly lighter, it definitely wasn't noticeable, so this myth is going to be a failure for me. So one of the most interesting myths we're going to be taking a look at is the ice expansion football hack. So it's basically believed that if you fill your football boots with water and freeze them that the expansion of the ice will cause them to get bigger. So let's get down to the pitch and try these out. Alright so we've got the freezer boot now so we're just going to be putting these on feet and seeing if they had any expansion overnight so let's get them on. <laughs> Right, so we've got the two boots on now and to be honest I can't really tell any difference between the one that should have expanded and the normal boot. So we're going to be giving the boots a quick run around anyway but I don't think the freezer had any impact on the expansion of the boot overall. Alright, so as I expected, the freezer didn't do anything to expand the boots, so this one is going to be a massive fail for me. So the second last myth we have today is whether leather boots make your touch better compared to synthetic boots. Alright, first up today we have the leather boots. Next up we have the synthetics. So as you can see the leather boots we were wearing were actually quite decent and they did feel a bit more padded than the synthetic boots but overall there wasn't enough in it to say that the leather boots were better than the synthetic boots. So finally today we're going to be seeing whether electrolyte or energy gels can actually help your performance in football. So we're going to be doing two sprints today, one with and one without an energy gel to see if our time improves, so let's get into it. Alright, and now it's time to take this gel. Alright, gel is finished, so now we just have to wait another 30 minutes before we can do the second sprint. So overall, our time did actually improve when taking the energy gel, but I think it was too small to say it made any major difference. I did actually notice that I felt more energized after taking the gel, and while our time only slightly improved, I think for longer endurance sprints, the electrolyte gel will actually help out. I also want to say thank you to my friend the boot wizard for sending these over to me, so if you want to check him out, I'll leave his link down below. But anyway, that's going to do it for today, guys. If you did enjoy it, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Turn into the real thing I tell her I am